Welcome everyone to the November cataloging SIG. Uh, we had a few questions submitted in advance and I will start off with those and then there will be plenty of time I'm working to open the chat and put in some links as I'm madly clicking over here. There we go. One of, one of the questions we had submitted ahead of time had to do with those seven XX linking entry fields. So the first link I'm putting in the chat is to the Mark 21 bibliographic for those linking entry fields. And one of the reasons linking entry fields were brought up was with the example of there's the hard copy and the electronic version. And what, is, what are the pros and cons of putting them all on the same record or putting them on separate records? OCLC has some very helpful guidelines and I'm putting that link in the chat too. And all these uh, links are gonna be in the YouTube recording description for later. Even if you're not an OCLC library, the, the guidelines that they have about cataloging electronic resources are really helpful because they kind of go field by field. So I like to put those out there as a resource. And I'm gonna put one last link from Bywater Solutions about the leader in MARC records, and I'll show you why in a minute. I'm gonna go ahead and let's see, look something up here. And I'm gonna go ahead and share my screen. Are y'all seeing our COHA catalog? Yep. Great. And we were upgraded last night to 2105. So if things are weird, we'll blame it on that. So I have a list. of RDA records, and it's a public list. So people can find these records on our catalog, which is at keys, as in multiple keys on a key ring, keys.bywatersolutions.com. And some of our records that are in this list are linked through linking entry fields. And we've digitized some of our PAM files, our ephemera files, like this one. This is a file of ephemera that we have about us. And we have available in another form, the print version. And we have the OCLC number as the link. And it goes right over to the hard copy, which if you click, goes right back over to the online copy. And I'm going to go ahead and open this up in our OPAC because it's here in the OPAC that you can see the pretty images from the digitized file. And one question is why separate records? What's the advantage? I mean, if it were all in one record, it would all be there. And many libraries choose to have things all on one record. Like for example, the Library of Congress, even though general policies are to put different media versions on separate records for maps, they sometimes have them on the same record. And let's see if I can pull one up.
This is one that I had been looking at. It's a nice map of the United States Territory of Oregon west of the Rocky Mountains. One map, there's the scale. It's, it's a hard copy item, but wait, online links? And sure enough, for their maps, they're using a single record approach. There's the digital map. It's neat, it's tidy. A lot of libraries use this single record approach for the online version. We, however, as you could see, use the separate record approach. The advantage to a separate record approach, and let's go ahead and pull up some things. Now, our, our little images are broken, but an advantage to a separate record approach is that this little material type here, and pretend there was a cute little book here, is drawn from the bibliographic record from the leader. So in the results, you're getting book, print, nonfiction, these descriptions are pulled from the bibliographic record. Down here, the availability in items, that's pulled from the item record. And here again, here's our copy of that map, material type map, format available online. It's a remote map. That's pulled again from the bibliographic record. And I think we might have a little problem with that that I'm noticing because this is the online version and we've got a location of map A rather than location online. I think I made a mistake on that one. Pretend you didn't see it. So here's, and here's the online, available online remote. Yeah, I think I've got the wrong leader values in that bibliographic record for our hard copy. <laughs> but pretend it's all pretty and correct. Over here on the left, the facets, map, book, locations, map, online. The locations are coming from item records. So we, if this were a shiny, correctly done example, Ideally, the user would be able to look at the descriptions, look at the item records and be able to say, oh, I see which one's the hard copy and I see which one's the online copy. And our item records, even though for the online copies, the remote copies, there's no barcode because of course it's not a physical thing we can barcode. The, we put those item records there in order for those facets and limiters and search options to show up when people are, say, at home or in their office away from the research center and really just want some online copies. And that's one reason why I linked to just my browser here so I can get that. By Water Solutions page on explaining these leader values and how to change the leader and the material type icon if they're not correct or take a look at them, what they are. I think it's a really good introduction to these leader values if you're not familiar with them or you need a refresher. And I'm going to go ahead and stop sharing my screen. And I don't know if Ray today was able to join us. I, see, I think I see Ray. Um, he had uh, sent in some information about how they're also using these linking entry fields in their catalogs. Sometimes you bring in a record 
that has the link. Hey, Ray, would you like to talk about it? Yeah, we had complaints when um, we didn't have the alternative format. Now, we buy the ebook, but we haven't got the print book or vice versa. And we haven't got time or the staff to go in and remove the links. And also, if you do, and then later you buy it, you've got to go back in and edit it again. So what we did was thought hard about um, how we could present this in the OPAC and um, using the OPAC no results found. And I think we've come up with, well, it's about as good as uh, I could get it. Um, I'll put a link in to our catalog where there's a, a rubbish search um, and it tells you, have you typed wrong or have you come here from a link to try and tell them the error of their ways. Let me put that link in there now. Yes, please. Uh, I, I took a look and I have to say, I really like the option you came up with and I want to copy it. <laughs> right. Uh, Is that link? While you're getting that link, I think I'll also bring up um, the fact that uh, the field that you choose to use for the link is how you know is customizable, is changeable. In our links, you can see we we made that OCLC number visible, and one reason we chose to do that was if we didn't have the item, then it's easier for users to see that OCLC number and use that to look for a library that does have it in worldcat.org. And uh, Bruce, you had sent in a question also about control numbers. And for us, we, we have an OCLC number in the 001 field and that's what we're using for the links. But I this reminds me of your issue with control numbers. Right, and uh, I've primarily, my primary problem is uh, amateur magazine publishers who uh, uh, will change names at random and uh, discontinue for two years and start up again. And worst of all, my own organization took 17 different publications and merged them into one and then split them back up again. And while they were merged, they maintained the volume and issue numbers for those included pieces. So I'm leaning pretty heavily on these uh, these links. <clears throat> the, the challenge I had is that I, uh, my finger slipped and I accidentally put in a very large number for a uh, control number. And it'll still increment, of course, but it's now got a, a gap of an order, a couple of orders of magnitude, which I would like to eliminate. And my thought is that somewhere in the system, that highest number assigned exists as a, as a record. And I'm wondering where it is and can I change it? Or even delete it, just put in, an, put in one manually. Maybe this is something to take to a dev chat. Yeah, that's, um, that is, I don't know. I mean, the system must, of course, store that number somewhere. I don't know where it is. That, yeah, uh, there might be a way to, I would say, I would look for a report to see if there's a report that lists the highest or gives you the highest number, maybe on the report wiki or on Mana. Yeah, I, I know what the, the highest legitimate number and the, and the, and the next assigned are, uh, but I just can't fix them. Uh, yeah. If anybody else has any ideas to share, that would be great. If not, yeah, I'd take it to the, the web dev group. I knew if I tried hard enough, I could come up with a pro question you guys couldn't answer, but it took me a while. <laughs> but yes, the, uh, the linking back and forth is uh, unfortunately very important to, to my collection and uh, I've been butting my head against it making slow progress, but uh, Mostly it's a matter of opening up, you know, two windows at once so I can go back and forth.
fun. And we have more in the chat about, <laughs> about the new results found. Yes, thank you. <laughs> Um, I'll also mention for those not familiar with linking entry fields with serials, they are really important for tying in together uh, continuations of when there's a big title change. So you have the, the old title has a linking entry field into it that says like continued by with the new title and the new title has, you know, continues Here's and then yeah, and you get the splits split into this and this, or you know, other editions available: the North American edition, the South American edition, the the Atlantic edition. Yeah, foreign language editions are another popular annoyance. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Is I'm, there? I'm, so far, I've I've found that the foreign language editions are completely different, not translations. So that's something you, you want to check, unless you, yes. unless you trust your, your publishers. Yes, good point. Is there a way to like, we have a lot of books that's the same book in a lot of languages. Um, right now they're not linked. And I'm like, actually that might be kind of nice if you, know, you, want, you, you pulled up the English to know that, okay, this book is also in Thai or Tagalog or, you know, is there, a, is there a field for that? That is a great question, Lauren. And cataloging rules approach it differently. There's a way that it was done a lot in ACR2. And then there's, there are other options with linking entry fields with RDA. Um, I, I'd be happy, let me share my screen. Okay and see if I can pull up. Let's go back to our catalog. Hmm. I am just going to do a search for German and fiction because I believe we might have Here we go. Hopefully this one's done well. We'll find out. And no, let's see. I think we've got the work, the book Das Boot. Ah, uh, here we go. So the way it was done and it's showing up very tiny. And that is a really interesting cover image that I'm going to have to look into later. <laughs> well, that's actually a, a fair representation, but it just has bad contrast. Yeah, it's very bad contrast. We've got this uniform title here, bold English, right. and that's the way it was done. And let me show the mark view under, or that, that's one option. all the editions would have this 240 field, okay. both English or both French. It, mm -hmm. And it's usually the first published original title. And that is used to collocate all the editions under that title with translation of Das Boot. And this is the way with uniform titles, different editions of say the Bible are all brought together. And in that case, it's the best known. It's just like Bible, English, Bible, French, that sort of thing. And uh, uniform titles can be used to collocate the uh, editions of works that are known by say, uh, you've got, um, you know, various editions of works that are known by various things, works of Shakespeare, that sort of thing where the, the title on the title page may be slightly different from the best known title, or in this case, you've got translations. Another approach is to use linking entry fields and RDA, I'm gonna stop sharing my screen. 
RDA allows for that, allows you to have linking entry fields that say translation of, and then link the record, or has been translated into English, French, that sort of thing. We haven't explored that option. We're still using uniform titles. And yes, thank you, Cecil. Uh, yeah, something that is a drawback in our catalog of this approach mm -hmm. is that that is not clickable. You have to click the author in order to get all the additions. Mm -hmm. And also, um, in a dream world, a dream catalog, I would like to have them all together under a record for Das Boot. And you could click, you, show me the additions, show me the languages. I think Aspen does that. Hmm. It looks like that's what it, it would do that. But I'm wanting to know how, to, what, you know what field? it would use to link the language would that be the addition field i can't remember yeah ray puts in i'd use the 776 for lauren's case wouldn't that okay. work let let me take a look over yeah i okay I, I'd, I'd, well, 776 for additional physical form is usually like the online version, the microfacial right. version. I, I think I'd be tempted to use the 775 other edition entry. And I'm scrolling over to see, yes, I'm gonna put this example in the chat from Mark. Format seven seven five. Yeah, the seven seven five has a language uh, tag in it, so that would uh, be helpful. That would whatever field I use, it has to have a language. <laughs> that would be a requirement. Yeah, it's important to know that this version of Macbeth is in Klingon. Yeah, that's right. I see Fred's joined us. Oh, he was on screen for a minute. There he is. Thought I smelled Hello. chicken. Can you hear me? Yeah. Yes. Yeah, I'm uh, connecting from my iPhone outside a hospital uh, office building. Where I hope my wife is still here so she can give me a ride home. I hope everything's all right. Um, my car has three dent rims. And everyone else is freezing, so probably not a great connection. There were a little interruptions, but I, I, I did hear that it's, it's a car problem. There's some bent rims. Well, I hope, I hope that works out really well. We were in the middle of discussing linking entry fields and language additions. And hey, Jason. I've, I've had one year okay. in here. Um, I, I wanted to mention that Kohat does do okay. some minimal herborization um without aspen and it leverages library thing and i've been playing with it on the side here um so i brought in a record for the boat and then i brought in das boot or however you say it. um and it it does seem to since those are both in the library thing record and i've turned that on um it links them up and i can show you what that looks like yes please um, this one okay so you see the record on my test server here? Yes. So um, since I brought two separate records in, but they're the same thing, then they get this additions tab and when I click it, then it brings me over to the other one. Uh, and that system preference is covered up by my Zoom controls. Um, so it's Ferberize Editions. It's in the Enhanced Content section. And then you also have to turn on ISBN. 
And if I recall correctly, they do limit the number of requests that you can make in a certain time period. Um, so if your catalog gets heavy use, it may stop working. I don't think we've ever run into that problem. Um, but there, you can turn it on and off independently in both the staff client and the OPAC if that becomes a problem. So that's that may be another option outside of, because nothing in the record is doing that. It's going out to library thing and looking and saying, oh, these, these additions are all together. Uh, it's all the same thing, but all these ISBN, it's using the ISBN to say, well, that should be associated with that. Oh, that's gorgeous. I love it. Yeah, thank you. I'm going to go play with that. Does anybody have any other questions about linking entry fields? I have another one on the leader. Is there a way to batch edit a bunt? Like if I run a report for articles that I have that are print articles, is there a way to do a batch edit to update all those leaders to say that it's a serial article instead of book, which it currently says, or do I have to manually do that? Okay, now I've only had two cups of coffee. <laughs> Disclaimer. Okay. But I'm thinking about going to try to take a look here at one of our records for an article. I'm just trying to figure out, you know, which of the offered uh, values you would want to use here. Yeah, it's, um, see what I'm thinking is that the analytic record for the article though is a monographic item. But let me get an example here. The icon, if you select monographic part or serial part, it changes the icon. If it's mon, if it's just, I can't remember, but it have book has a different icon than article and article has a different icon than continuing resource. If I may, oh. where, where do you find this option? Yeah, are you talking about like in Not that browse list? list? I'm little... talking about, Oh, sorry, the, I'm getting confused. The 008. Mm -hmm. So okay. the leader has something to do with our articles and journals are a mess. They all say book. Okay. So it, I'm like, we have to clean it up. And my first step is cleaning up the item record. But at some point, the bibliographic record needs to be touched. Um, they're all print, so the three, three, six, seven, and eight would all be the same. That's fine. It's the leader and the zero, zero, eight that's going to have to. Right, right. It needs to have. You're talking about having in the bibliographic record that material type, say article. Yes. Yes, that is from the leader. So, yes. <laughs> Thank you, Liz. 008 position 23. <laughs> I would say um, definitely check out that Bywater Solutions page. Okay. And oh, Jason put in something helpful. And Ray suggests Mark edit. Yeah, I'm not I'm not familiar with 
changing, doing a batch edit inside, like a batch modification tool on the 008. That's a little bit outside my expertise. Others might have more information on that, but that is definitely something that Mark Edit can handle. And Mark Edit has the additional benefit of your you're extracting copies into Mark Edit and you can play with them. That's what the, the link that I put in there is uh, talking about using Mark Edit to modify your control fields. And there's info, info on modifying your leader in there too. Okay. Great, Jason, thank you. Yeah, and Leanne mentions 000S for serials. Yes, yes. Um, I have a little model analytic record. I can pull that up. Here we go. Here's one of our analytics. And that little material type icon is actually working. Interesting. And we have we have in that model record it's kind of a weird hybrid. Uh, it just said we scanned, we have scanned issues available online. Mm -hmm. We don't have a separate online record or separate online article. So we have an article also available online in the Internet Archive scanned issue link, which is kind of another blend for this whole Shall we have a single record? Shall we have a separate record? Oh, and Julia's joined us. Hey, welcome. I guess my feeling on the approach of should you do a single record approach for different manifestations of an item, say hard copy, online, micro formats, et cetera. I've always felt that there's, you think you, one has to think about what is best for the user, how are they gonna approach it? How are they gonna try to find it? And I found at least in our setting that there's no one solution that's appropriate for every format. Uh, you'll see with, these types of analytics where we've got an analytic record for an article, but there's no separate online version of the article, but the whole magazine's available online. We, we've done this sort of single entry, single record approach for that. But for maps and charts, we've done a full separate record approach. So those are all completely findable, sortable, searchable separately. There may be no one solution appropriate for every format. Yeah, the librarian's favorite answer is, well, it depends. Exactly. Well, and going back to talking about how to deal with different language editions, we also had a question submitted ahead of time about foreign language articles, because of mm. course in the foreign languages that affects the sorting. And let me go back to Mark 21 and put in a link to the 245 title or two, these are all the title fields. And when 
when we were looking at our record for Das Boot in the 240s in uniform titles, all the articles are dropped. So the 240 was just Boot. So some of the fields articles are dropped because there's no way there's either no way to tell the machine where to sort or that was the cataloging rule at the time. But in the 245, that second indicator tells the machine where to start sorting. When it works. Yep. Oh, and let me go ahead and put that link into everyone. There we go. My problem is the inventory function doesn't uh, uh, respect uh, that second indicator. Ooh, it sounds like there's a there's a good bug that should go into Bugzilla yeah. for development. Yeah, it recognizes A, N, and V, but any foreign language uh, articles just rolled right in. Ooh, that so that you yeah, know, of course, the French always start with L apostrophe, and then then we got a whole another problem. And the indicator is set differently. And I really encourage people to look at the Mark 21 for 245. Um, <laughs> uh, le mort, L apostrophe, amour. That's going to get a second indicator of two, two for the L and the apostrophe. But if you have, if I'm remembering correctly, if you have punctuation first, then a sortable word. Let's let's go look. It's it's a little bit different. Oh, and Leanne puts in the chat too. Yes, this could have effects with migration issues. <coughs> right, Indico Hut, depending on how your your indicators are set. So yeah, the examples in the two forty five. This is a great one. They say there's brackets. Yeah. It's it just a, a raw character count for uh, uh, some sorts, but it's uh, just ignored for some others. Yeah. Well, does anyone have any other questions today or uh, anything they'd like to chat about, bring up? I have a couple. <laughs> yes, Leanne, what? Um, I mean, Lauren, excuse yeah. me, excuse me. And some of them are on the whole idea of languages. So is it possible, you can translate item types. Is it possible to translate authorized values? Instead of creating authorized, you know, the same shelving location is journal. You know, all of our libraries have journal, but they're in different languages. So right now I have to create, I either have to put the translation and make it one really long thing, or I have to just create new <clears throat> shelving locations in the different languages. Is there a way to translate? Am I mit, like, I feel like I'm missing something. No, that's, that's an incredibly interesting question. And I think I would take that to perhaps the web dev sig because it has to do with different language, uh, different language members of your consortium. Mm -hmm. All right, I have zoned out there. Are, are you just wanting to display things in different languages? Yes. On the, on the OPAC? So I think you can install separate language packages. Um, because there is a huge translation community for, for Koha. Um, and I'm not sure how to do that. <laughs> um, but I know that there are some system preferences in the like 
That's uh, some numbers and letters. Maybe. Yeah, uh, translations are a thing, but I think the question here is, uh, is there a, the ability to create a second authority file or a translation of the authority records? Yeah, it, it would be. Oh, so your yeah. authorized values are, they're localized, so they're not translated in the big scheme of things. I got you. Oh, so if you're talking about authority records, absolutely. You huh? can absolutely use different whole okay. thesauri. Um, and that's usually controlled in, in say, the in subject records and six XX fields, right. it's the second indicator, whether you're using say the, the French authority uh -huh. terms or the, or the Spanish or the German, or, I mean, it would be less of an issue, I would think in names because, you know, a name is a name is a name. Right. Um, but yeah, you can, you can definitely, when it comes to your authority file, COHA is very happy importing different you know library of congress along with genre terms and and i i think it would be very happy also importing different language subject to sorry i'm looking up the coha us page that lists our different sigs because we've we've mentioned oh that might be a good question for web dev or but um Let's put the link in the chat so people know about those interest groups. Here we go. Because there is a consortia interest group, which may have some information about different language members of the consortia, but also there is the web dev group and the system administration group okay. that may have more information and familiarity with the different language installations. Okay. And then I have another question. We, we just added a library that uses Library of Congress instead of Dewey. Now you're talking my language. All yeah. right. <laughs> so Library of Congress has split call numbers versus Dewey tends to be a straight. I feel like this is a different English. I don't know what the English is for the different options in the item record. Is there a way to split? Like, can Koha split the call number? Or does it all have to be in zero? I think it's zero is the call number. Can I make it the two? Can they keep the two separate fields or do they have to all be in one to work in Koha? So if I, th I think if I understand your question correctly, mm -hmm. um, you're talking about item records. Mm -hmm. Each item record has a field in it that says whether or not this item has a Dewey or a Library of Congress call number. Mm -hmm. And if that's set correctly, COHA then should handle and display the call number appropriately. Would it change the fields used? In the item record, you'd still have your call number in the subfield O, I think. Let me look again at my record. So I'm pulling up an item record to take a look. Yeah, that in the item record, which is a 952, if I remember correctly, subfield two is your source of classification mm -hmm. or shelving scheme. And if that is set for like correctly for Library of Congress or Dewey, then whatever you have in the subfield O for full call number should 
display correctly. And I'm going to put, oh, here we go. Um, oh, ah, okay. Yeah, O50 subfield A and B is not, um, is, is formatted completely differently from the subfield O. So yes, Fred, yes. So here I'm putting in, this is what we've got in one of our records for a subfield O. This is in the item record. And then in the bib record, the way that looks, grab the mark for the 050 is formatted differently. And looks very weird in the chat. So what we do uh, is I have to manually edit what is automatically put in the chat in the in the subfield though in the item record. Yeah. I need to take out that full stop that period before the first cutter, O oh, three three six three six, and then take you know it. It doesn't automatically feed it super correctly usually, but it does, Koha does do a pretty good job. Okay. Forgive me, I'm, I'm, I'm lost here. I was under the impression that call numbers went into the item record rather than the biblio. They're in both places. Um, yeah. Yeah. The bib record, yeah. <laughs> See, the bib record carries the call number for the whole title in the Library of Congress call number in an 050 or, okay, in a model world, the yeah. Library of Congress call number is in the 050. The Dewey number, I believe, is in the 082. And if there are local differences for that, there are local, like for Library of Congress, you can go into an 090, but now we're getting a little weird. So the 050. Yeah, the library, that's what I need. Yes. And then your item record, your 952 subfield O is pulling out of, depending on your COHA installation, usually it's pulling out of an 050 to then supply. Here, here you go. This is your, your call number, right? And then in an ideal world, in one library, all the item records have the same call number. Um, Things, of course, get a little different if you've got a consortia like Lauren's. Yeah. yeah. And I'm popping back over to Mark 21. So, so if, I'm, my, if I understand correctly, um, the 050 or whatever is going to have a call number that is correct for all of the items, which is to say it might be truncated if there's multiple volumes the volume numbers would only be in the item record? Yes, the, if there are multiple, vo multiple volumes that are all on that same bib record, then you're going to be using the 952 subfield H yeah. serial enumeration chronology for your volume numbers. And then you're gonna be, if you've got copy numbers, those are gonna go in the subfield T. Right. Now, if you're in a consortium and you are using 050s for, your call for your Library of Congress call numbers, there are subfield codes. I believe, let me think. I think if different libraries are using different Library of Congress call numbers, I think that's where you'd start using some 090s possibly. But again, that might be a question to take to the consortia, the consortia special interest group. Uh, there's, there's only one of me, but uh, the we do have a, a, a unique uh, classification system and 090 is completely undefined. So I'm not sure how much that's going to buy me. Well, we actually use the 090 because we vary from the Library of Congress quite often since um, we have a world of local cataloging practices historically as, as I'm and, sure you do. And special libraries just you know don't fit very well. Uh, the, 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 I used to run a railroad history library and I, I took a Dymo labeler and made 385 and stuck it over the door. 
So yeah, so we oftentimes will have multiple O5Os in our record. We've got an O5O with the indicators indicating this is the Library of Congress call number that the Library of Congress uses. Here's an O5O second indicator four that is a slight variation that we use or that we'd like to use. And then an 090, this is what's really on the item right now because I haven't done my um, reclassification project. Okay. I know about reclassification, not but. Oh, and Ray puts into the chat about um, Ah, their usage with their six colleges. Thank you, Ray. Yeah, our utter madness. Um, it's, we have uh, various versions, and what we're doing is uh, we're ignoring any bibliographic level um, classification and creating our own, and we uh, have done some pretty good stuff with EDI um, to populate the, the item record, the item call number field. Works very well. And as long as we're, uh, we have got the subfield two set to Dewey, um, they, all, um, they all sort in order correctly. That's great, Ray, thank you. Um, I will point out too that COHA does have issues sorting Library of Congress call numbers correctly. Um, I, I don't have uh, on the, I don't have the bugs put up right now, but when I'm actually shelf listing with the Library of Congress, I use an item search because the advanced item search will actually then, when I click the heading for call number, will actually sort all of the Library of Congress cutters correctly because the for those unfamiliar, the initial alphanumeric sequence in the Library of Congress is a whole number, and then the cutters are decimals. Do you know if the the item types allow for so like some of this is migration old systems allowed for a field for prefix a field for classification a field for item and then a field for copy or volume does koha like is there a way to make koha do that where i can just move information from the 852 into the 952 without merging them into the full number, or do I need to is that my only option I think if I understand you correctly I have also worked with systems that do have the like a call number prefix field mm -hmm. Koha I I believe uses item types locations and collection codes Okay. So collection codes are often where other systems use prefix that would be like fiction or uh, graphic novels or board books, picture books. So a lot of times collection codes can handle that, that, that prefix function mm -hmm. or it's actually having to do with an item type or a shelving location. Mm -hmm. There's might have more information on how they have approached that. Yeah, we just kind of dump everything into that full call number field. So, and as far as the, we're kind of wild westy with the call numbers in general. I mean, we'll, we'll, we let the um, Republic, so we we're all Dewey pretty much, um, but we let that fall come out of the, the record the OA2, I think, is what we have mapped. Um, so we'll let that pull down to the item. Uh, but then every library has control over what they actually put in that call number field. That's one of our big local control things. But um, yeah, I would agree that like a lot of the classification is happening outside of the call number field in Koha. So we'll put we'll, our system is collection code is adult books. And then our shelving locations are separating it out to fiction, nonfiction, whatever. Um, but some of that information does get put into the call number as well. So like we've got the F and then the author for the author field, that sort of thing. But it's all kind of just living in that one field. 
Okay, thanks. Mm -hmm. Oh, and Melanie put a link into the chat with, uh, oh, Excel for sorting LC call numbers correctly. Interesting, thank you, Melanie. Um, Bob, Bruce, Bruce, not Bob. Bruce and I were having a, a conversation on the side about his control number issue. Uh, I did want to uh, put this in chat as well. I don't know. There's an authorized value category, so you might be able to get at it from that angle instead. Like, because we were talking about getting into the database and getting into the metadata field and manipulating the number there. Um, but if you can get control of yeah, if you can get control over that in the on the front end, I think that would give you a cleaner result. So maybe if you can get this the advanced cataloging editor set up to see the 001, um, you might be able to get at it without having to to modify your database. All it all it lets me do is uh, override the number, which doesn't let you put in your own number. Yeah, it does allow me to put in my own number, but. Uh, uh, the auto increment function is awfully nice because yeah. I don't trust me not to duplicate myself. I wonder if turning off the auto increment and then setting your number and then turning it back on would reset it. No, that's the control number auto increment isn't uh, controllable. Uh, it is for uh, uh, barcodes, but not. I, I couldn't find a, a control to turn it off. Turn off uh, inc auto increment control numbers. Okay. And see, I'm not familiar with it enough because we don't use auto increments at all. So, um, no, yeah, I, <laughs> I'm not going to claim expertise either. <laughs> all right, I'll try web dev. See what they got. Yeah, yeah. Luke is, is usually at web dev, and he he knows the back end inner workings, so he might have a an easier solution too. Yeah, we're we're on the wrong side of the digital divide here. <laughs> and, and if you do uh, take it to web dev or, or, or even the sysadmin group and, and get some answers, please let us know how it goes. Well, we're, we're at the top of the hour, but does anybody have anything else? I think I'd have done that farm. Well, our next meeting is uh, scheduled for Thursday, December 2nd. So I guess we'll see you then. I'm gonna go ahead and stop the recording.